Leave it to Rick Dollywall and the Donnie and Dolly Show to get things stirred up and to give us some updates as to what's going on with the Vancouver Canucks. So big shout out over to Dollywall as always. The link to this source will be in the description below. It's a video this time, a three-minute segment on today's Donnie and Dolly that goes over the latest in terms of Vancouver Canucks player targets. All sides want this to end with a signing. Dollywall updates what he is hearing with Phil Kessel and also so if the Canucks are still kicking tires on Jake Gensel. Now, what I did was I transcribed some of these comments made by Dolly Wall in order to give us a more visual look as to what's going on. It's just easier to screenshot, put it on the screen so you can follow along. But again, the video wherein Dolly Wall says this and more is going to be linked in the description below. It's three minutes long, so Dolly Wall essentially gives us the big scoop here. But the conversation starts out with a comment on Phil Kessel. And I think this is actually great to have because, yeah, we saw Phil Kessel come over to Vancouver. He's been practicing with Abbotsford this entire time. And that was like the biggest story of the day a few weeks ago. So it's kind of weird how we didn't really see anything happen after that. But Dollywall does give the scoop. He says this on the show. I'm not hearing anything negative when it comes to the Canucks and Phil Kessel. He'll continue to work out this week. All sides want this to end with a signing. The goal was always to sign Kessel. I think that's where it's trending. He's not going to start in Abbotsford from what I'm told. It's going to be a signing with the Canucks first, if it happens, that's where it's trending, and then possibly a conditioning assignment in Abbotsford after a signing, if that's the way they go. And so for Phil, this isn't really something that I think would be all too surprising, especially considering some of the other factors that we've seen. How continuously the Abbotsford Canucks are posting pictures on their Instagram and their social media, it's on their Facebook, and like, you can see Phil Kessel in the background, he's kind of blurry, they're not trying to put the focus on him, which is understandable because, hey, he's not technically a part of the roster, but it's impossible to avoid acknowledging that he is there. So there are some inklings of information that the Abbotsford Canucks have been putting out there that make it seem, yeah, he's still here, he's still practicing, and Dollywell even says in the clip, I didn't transcribe this one, but the fact that he is still here, the fact that he is still willing to practice with an AHL team for two straight weeks, that is a good sign because it means that he actually is committed to wanting to be a part of this process, that he's not giving up, that he's not taking things lightly, that he is just using this as the opportunity given to him by the Canucks management and staff to say, hey, if you want to play with us, you have to kind of follow what it is we want to do here. And for now, you're practicing with the Abbotsford Canucks. Once you sign with us, maybe you'll get a conditioning stint or whatever, and then you'll be able to get up to speed within a game. But for now, it's been a few weeks of actually getting himself back up to speed. This is a good thing for the Vancouver Canucks, and it's looking more so, according to what Dollywall said, that things are going in the right direction if you're looking for a signing. This is going to be crazy because if Phil Kessel, of all people, becomes a Vancouver Canuck, I don't even need to think that he plays all the playoff games. Like, that's not even really my concern here. It's just the status, you know? Being the team to carry on what would be the most legendary streak in NHL history, assuming, of course, the Canucks actually intend to do that. But this would be pretty cool. And if he actually is able to play NHL games and play meaningful minutes, maybe he replaces Mikheyev on a line or whatever, and then... When it comes to American Pittsburgh Penguins, or at least Americans who played for the Pittsburgh Penguins, at least at some point, this is another update that Dolly Ball provides in the same video clip in regards to Pittsburgh Penguins forward Jake Gensel. Now, Donnie and Dolly both acknowledge on the show that Gensel has indeed been injured, which kind of throws a monkey wrench into the entire conversation as to whether or not he'll get traded. We have made a few update videos just kind of exploring the options there. But when it comes to Gensel, Dollywell goes out there and says this, that the Canucks' preference is not to trade another first-round pick, but that would be impossible in a Jake Gensel trade. The Canucks, though, won't give up a first-round pick for a rental. They would do it in a sign-and-trade. Are the Canucks on Gensel's no-trade list? Most believe he is, but it won't be a problem, I'm told. He is not the only winger out there that the Canucks are after. And, of course, as indicated by the ellipses in the 
sentence. There are multiple other things that Dollywall talks about and brings up in this Gensel conversation, but the main takeaway is that there is still interest and that if there is some sort of a sign and trade rather than just a trade, then the Vancouver Canucks would be okay with giving up a first round pick. And to me, that makes sense. Like when you think about it, yeah, sure. A first round pick is valuable as we had talked about in that Elias Lindholm trade. But for Vancouver, if they're going out there and signing Gensel to a contract, then if you take that first round pick and you say, all right, well, in three years, that first round pick, let's say it's 20 plus overall in the 2025 NHL draft, for example, they trade their 2025 first round pick for Gensel. If that 2025 guy ends up following a proper path as most 20 plus overall guys do, then he's probably in the NHL in 2027, 28, and he's probably not like good until 2029 even. And so if you get to that point in 2029, you'd probably hope that best case scenario, that first round pick that you drafted in 2025 is as good as how Jake Gensel is now. So there's sort of a timeline here to think about when you talk about the value of first round picks and what it would take to trade them away, what kind of value you're receiving in return. Jake Gensel, of course, is good now, and his prime aligns with the success period of the Canucks right now. Sorry, 2025 first round pick, but there isn't any waiting here that's possible till 2027 before you become a part of this team and actually start to make an impact. Even the guys from recently, I mean, Tom Villander, 2023, Jonathan Lakaramaki, 2022, these guys are great prospects, but right now, their value to the team is nothing more than trade value. They don't have any projection of being a part of this 2023-2024 Vancouver Canucks team that's already the top team in the NHL and that can make a very significant splash in the postseason if they carry forward with this momentum. So, my thought process is kind of going out there saying, yeah, if they wanted to make a trade with the first for Gensel, as long as they're guaranteeing that he'll stick around, then okay, I kind of agree with that. And if you want to talk about Gensel and Kessel. Talk about both of these guys potentially coming over. It's literally going to be a Pittsburgh Penguins reunion in Vancouver. Alvin Rutherford, Casey DeSmith, Mark Friedman, um, who else? Kessel, Gensel, of course, and then you talk about Sam Lafferty, Ian Cole, lots of other guys who have played for the Pittsburgh Penguins over the years that would be making their way over to Vancouver and that's like barely scratching the surface. There's so many guys that can be a part of that group. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you are a Vancouver Canucks fan, what are your opinions about this entire update? We're talking about Gensel. We're talking about Kessel. It's Rick Dollywell who gave us the scoop on Donnie and Dolly. The entire segment will be linked in the description below if you want to go out there and watch that yourself. Again, there are some extra things that Dolly talks about that I didn't really highlight here in this video, but... If you want to talk about this, let me know your thoughts in the comments as to where the lines would fit. Not saying that Phil Kessel is the same 90-point guy he was in Pittsburgh. He's a lot older now, and he's a lot more refined on his playmaking. But if he does come over to Vancouver, where do you put him in the lineup? And same question goes for Jake Gensel. Do you stick a Phil Kessel as the extra piece on the Elias Pettersson line just because there's a little bit of experience and leadership there to get things going? Do you put Gensel with Besser and Miller to get that All-American American line? Who do you take out of the lineup? Do you think immediately it's Ilya Mikheyev? Do you try to force a PDG out or a Sam Lafferty, for example? And you keep Mikheyev in there? Who really knows? There's a lot of conversations we can have about the progression of the lineup, assuming the Canucks do go out there and put things to the test. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.